Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to go from just having uh, the find target sequence of um, just trying to have the character move to a target and jump over walls, including players, to basically if uh, we happen to have a sensor that detects a player and that player is within range, then we're going to try attacking it. So let's start by adding extra leafs to our behavior tree. Um, so first off, to have uh, the base of the tree, you have to use a composite, I'm pretty sure. So I want this to be a dynamic selector. So I'm going to click dynamic selector, right click, make it the root, rename this to be Krabby AI. And what a dynamic selector does is it goes through each of the conditions and uh, checks if they are able to run. So what a so what a dynamic selector is going to do is go down the list and uh, try to run each task when those tasks so what a dynamic selector is going to do is run each of its child tasks these uh, children leaves and run each of them until one of them returns a success and on every tick it's going to basically cycle through all of them and start from the beginning again if it was a, a like a regular selector node then it would keep going until the entire tree is finished and not return to the start. So when you have a dynamic composite, it always returns to the start as it um, tries to go down the list of tasks to do and then returning back up on the next tick again. Um, so basically, when you use the dynamic selector, you can be sure that anything under it or directly under it is going to run on every frame or every update for the behavior tree. So what we want to do is uh, probably have like a sequence here that ranks above find target sequence. So this is going to be the attack target sequence. And first off, we need to check a variable on the blackboard. So we're going to check if the player is recognized as an attack target. So we'll do check var and let's say uh, variable name target. And then we'll click this button over here to add it to the blackboard plan. So add variable target, and this wants to be an object reference. And let's say attack target for the character. Okay. When it's on the blackboard, you'll get this verification check mark over here on the right. And we want to make sure that this is equal to not uh, not null. So when you create a new BB variant, the default is null. So we want it to be not equal to null. You'll see that the name of that task gets updated. So we can only attack if the target is not null. Um, so then we want to give it like an attack cooldown, right? So that we can't just play the attack repeatedly over and over again for the enemy. We'll say cooldown of one second. Okay, so after having the cooldown of one second, uh, we could add in the attack target um, task, right? Like just like we did navigation to point, but we can actually make it easier than that. Uh, if you recall the Krabby animation player, our attacks. Oh, I guess we didn't set that up, but for the player we did. So if we look at the player's animation player and ground attacks, then you'll see that these already kind of have the collision shape set up. So all we need to worry about is really playing the animation. And we don't necessarily need to worry about the AI knowing that the target got hit. So even easier than creating a task, it's just going to be to play the right animation. So we could say play animation here, and then we're going to um, get the animation player. So let's see, new BB node, we can assign a saved value to the animation player here. And then the animation we're going to play is attack. The uh, That just means now we need to get the target uh, using a sensor. And when we play the animation attack, we want to put a lock so that our regular animation code um, doesn't run until we release the lock. So. Uh, let's start with getting the target. So creating a sensor. Um, a sensor is usually going to be area 2D based, in my experience at least. So I'm going to right click on the base node, add a child node, area 2D, add it in. So an area 2D um, does not affect physics directly. It is only for reading objects that are inside of the area uh, or objects that have just left the area. So knowing if a player entered with the area 2D is really straightforward. So let's say um, detection zone. And then we will right click add a child node and this will be a collision shape 2D. I'll make it like a rectangle shape. Let's put it 
right over here to the right. So like right in front of where our character is. And I'm going to put this under the facing. So detection zone goes under facing so that when the facing flips, the detection zone flips to the left side of our character as well. Um, now we need to put a script here to detect the player. So right click, attach script, um, detection zone .gd. So we'll say class name, um, let's just say detection zone, detects when a player enters and leaves the zone. So I have a var target, which is going to be a uh, node 2D of some kind. Or we could even just say it's like a, um, a character. I think that's fine. So character extends character body 2D and the setup. So when you have a area 2D, you have these signals, right? So you can connect to the signals from within its own script. So if I do something like function underscore ready, and we want to do body entered dot connect and we're going to connect it to on body entered and then we'll do body exited dot connect underscore on body exited okay so now we need to create those functions so function on body entered which is going to take a body of a node 2d so when any node 2d enters this event triggers and then we can just check if it is a character. And if it is, we'll just set that as the target. There would be multiple ways you can keep track of targets. You could have an array of targets and then prioritize them and everything else. But we're just keeping it simple as much as possible. No need to get extra complicated. So if uh, the key body is a character, let's just say, yeah, sure. Um, then we'll make the target the character. So target equals P body. And then on a function on body exited, P body node QD, we'll say if target is equal to the P body, then target equals null. So this removes the target and this sets the target. Now, this is basically allowing any character to be in there. So that would include other enemies at this point. So what you can do uh, rather than needing to code extra differentiation, I mean, you could just make it like player in the script. But another way you could do it is in the detection zone, you can change the collision map. And you can just make it so that the mask only targets a player layer. So if we say uh, mask on two, and then we click here, edit layer names, we can just say one is world, two is player, three is enemy. And now if we're masking for layer two, that means that we're only targeting players. So even if any character is allowed in here, only the ones that have character, uh, I mean, only the ones that have player as their um, collision layer on their character body 2D are going to be picked up. So before we go ahead, we should make sure that the player, uh, if we click over here, is in fact on um, collision layer 2. And if we want to remove it from the standard world collision uh, so that like enemies can pass through it, we could also remove the player from layer 1. Uh, that would be an option if you want like characters to be able to pass through each other. Just FYI, uh, don't think we need it for this series. Don't think we need that for this series though. So, okay, back to uh, Krabby. So we're targeting players. If a player enters, we get that. Uh, what we want to do now is probably to link this up with the BT players blackboard so that we can bind the target variable with the variable on the blackboard. So I'll do a at export var, um, let's just say BT player. So BT player, and then uh, we'll get that blackboard we'll type blackboard. So on ready, we want to get the blackboard to be equal to BT player dot blackboard. And then we want to bind the variable on the blackboard. So blackboard dot bind variable to property. We're going to say, um, well, I guess we need a new, a new one. So B, BB names dot target var. This doesn't exist, so I'm going to copy this name, right click on BB names, look up symbol, go in here, static var, target var, string name, and it'll be target. Once again, this list is just shared string names, so we only have to write once and share everywhere. Okay, um, and we want to bind that to this object, but the target property. Uh, da, 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 argument three should be string name. Oh, okay, yeah, right, right. So we want in quotations target. The name of this property up here okay um so now whenever we set the target it should be updated on the blackboard 
which means uh, we come in here, we should be able to pass the if null condition. If the cooldown has occurred, so one second has elapsed, and we could say uh, the starts cooled. So like the first time we encounter the player, we don't have to wait a second to be able to do that. Uh, don't think we need anything else there. So the last thing we need to do. So now we need to set up the attack animation for the Krabby. So uh, let's go to animation player. Let's create a new animation. I'll call it attack, just like how we uh, set it up in the AI. So this is playing attack, all lowercase. Actually, it would be quick to duplicate from a different one. So uh, I'm going to go to idle and let's duplicate this. I'll call it attack. Okay, now in attack, we want to click here, change the animation to attack. And uh, I'll hit play. Let's see how, how much frames we actually need. So the ones that have these empty dots here are frames that don't exist. So it's putting it out of value, which is already passed where the attack animation would finish. So we can delete all of those, change the duration to 0 0.4, and there's our attack animation. So I'm going to make this not loop. Uh, now, what will happen now, I expect, is that when this attack animation plays, the base script, which controls animations here, if I scroll down to select movement animation, it's just going to override it and play a different animation. So we need some kind of lock when we play a special non-movement animation to make it so that um, our NPC stops playing other base an animations until we return control to it. So let's create a um, function here, um, lock movement, and then function unlock movement. So lock movement is going to take uh, var, it should be lock animation actually, so var Locked animation equals false. So coming down here, when we lock, we set this to true. When we unlock, we set this to false. It needs to be a function so we can call it on the animation timeline down here. Um, and we're going to rename lock movement to lock animation. And then this is also unlocked animation. OK, so to make this actually do something, if locked animation, so if here, then if locked animation, we're just going to return. Um, and now we just need to call these functions lock and unlock at the start and end of our attacks. So uh, let's enable snapping, zoom in, make sure we're at zero, zero. We're going to add a call method track on the Krabby script. We're going to right click, insert a key. We're calling the lock animation function. And then at the end, we right click, insert key, unlock animation. And that's probably all we need to do for uh, preventing this script from overriding the animation. So if we hit play now, let's see if we can get those attacks in. Uh, okay, so first off, we haven't set the blackboard. So if we click on the detection zone, we need to assign the BT player. Let's hit play again. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get some attacks going. Well, if he's actually going to stay in one place. It might be easier if uh, we set like a few duplicates. That would also help us determine if they're accidentally attacking each other when they shouldn't be. So I'm going to hit play. Do we get any attacks? OK, so uh, one thing you can do uh, for debugging is actually to click debugger and uh, go to Limbo AI and click on one of these trees. And you can see uh, where they're actually at in their uh, sequences. So right now, it seems like the target is not really getting set to true. Uh, what we could do in the Krabby scene is like when the target gets set Let's do like a set value here, target equals value. And then let's say um, new target percent s on percent s. And then we pass a, a percent and then array here of, uh, let's see, the target value and then get parent, which would be the, no, that would be the facing node, wouldn't it? Uh, I guess I'll just say this this name. So new target on, um, the detection zone name, I guess for now is fine. So we can see uh, the Captain Clown nose is getting set to a target. Uh, let's rerun that so that you can see. So it's like trying to figure out why it's not playing the animation. Uh, maybe what we do is let's make this actually both sides because I saw that the attack animation actually detects both sides. OK, so another uh, another leaf you can add in here is uh, actually a console print. So I could say here attack so that we know that it was trying to attack after the cooldown happens. Let's also check the debugger uh, can't bind a variable that doesn't exist. That's probably what's happening here. 
honestly. So if we click on the BT player, we have the target here. Maybe we just set um, create to true. Okay, now let's see, does that change anything? So if we check the debug log here, we can see that attack was triggering, uh, but it wasn't really playing the animation, which makes me think it was like overwriting. Um, so let's actually see if that return, if locked animation actually occurred. So I'll hit play and I don't see that happening. So um, yeah, maybe that is what's up here. Uh, okay, well, I guess the cooldown has to have only one child task. So we could make that a sequence. So we play one sequence after the cooldown. Then we move these into it. Okay, there that should uh, solve that. Hit play. Okay, now it is actually hitting locked animation. So if we hit play, is it actually playing the animation? Uh, I saw it play there once. Okay, uh, first off, I kind of want to um, slow down how fast the character is moving, I think. So let's go into its character stats and make the run speed 200 or 150 and then maybe uh, 50 for the max attacking speed. Okay, and although the attack is occurring, it seems like it's still trying to move the character when it's doing an attack. I don't exactly want that. So if you click on play animation, what you can do is you can await completion. So let's say one second, await completion. This will make it wait for this before it continues on to the other ones. So if we hit play and then we do, we have it do an attack, then it's actually going to stop, right? It looked like it, but let me uh, hit play again. Okay, so that's a little bit closer to what we want. Uh, maybe it would make sense if we just make it able to detect the player on both sides. Um... I don't know, that's kind of debatable because it is looking one direction, but it can attack both ways. So let's see, how does that work? Oh, it seems a little unfair. So maybe we would also want to like put on like a delay. <clears throat> so like we delay some time before we go into this attack. So let's just say 0.3 second delay. But we do still want it to use uh, gravity during that time, right? So let me see, is it still applying gravity during physics process? Yeah, it should be. So yeah, that's probably good for like a basic setup. Obviously, there are some tweaks to be made here and there, but I think this is like a decent working prototype. And at least it kind of demonstrates how you can like uh, set up your behavior tree hierarchies to control like what happens. So like if you have um, target equals null, then it's going to skip all of this and just go straight to moving around. You can also use that kind of check for things like, oh, is the character on the ground? Then uh, if it is, then you can allow it to do jumps and that could be part of your AI. In this case, I just kind of combined that sort of movement onto the navigation to point task. Um, just because I think if you have too many separate tasks, it can get a little bit cluttered up here. But I think that'll do for right now. So possibly in the last video, we're going to work on getting the enemies hit colliders and the players hit colliders to work uh, just so that they can damage each other. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the last video.